Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to hey, the SummerSlam Raw and Review Show, sponsored by the Wrestling Marks for Excellence in Fox Sports Radio, 1340 AM and 96.9 uh, FM. I'm Glenn Thomas. I will be your host or your moderator for this review show of 2018 SummerSlam, which came from the Barclays Center, which might as well have been the last time that WWE SummerSlam will be in the Barclays Center anytime soon. We know the WWE is moving having WrestleMania in New York next year. Can't imagine, can't see WWE having WrestleMania and SummerSlam both in New York uh, within the same calendar year. Uh, but nonetheless, stranger things have happened. But well, we're going to go ahead and get this uh, show started, reviews and results of SummerSlam. I know a lot of you want to talk about the the end of SummerSlam, how you liked it, didn't like it, thought it was a dud, and what whatever case may be. But let's go ahead and get started. As we saw the pre-show kickoff with Rusev and Lana taking on Cian Alma and Selena Vega. Very good match here to open up the open up the card. Uh, wasn't that many people in the arena at the time. And sometimes when they were paying the camera, you could see people were still filing into the arena uh, with the early start time of this pay-per-view. But nonetheless, Cian Alma and Selena Vega gets the win as Selena rolled up Lana and put her foot on a, foot on a rope for the one two, three. Be interested to see where this match goes here. See, interested to see where this feud goes on SmackDown uh, this upcoming week. Then we moved on to the Cruiserweight Championship match where we saw Cedric Alexander take on Drew Gulak. Very good match here. What you expect from 205 wrestlers. A little high, 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 um, uh, high risk maneuvers. We saw a lot of chain wrestling here and it was the chain wrestling that ended up as Cedric Alexander gets a pin, a roll up pin over Drew Gulak for the win here. So Cedric Alexander retains the Cruiserweight Championship. If you have not watched the 205 product, please continue to watch it. It is very good. So go on Tuesday nights, WWE Network, check, check and check out 205 Live. A uh, very decent product here. Uh, 205 has been growing and growing ever since uh, Triple H really taken over and made it his baby. Uh, so, and since Cedric Alexander has been champion. So check out 205. Cedric, nonetheless, Cedric Alexander wins and retains the Cruiserweight Championship. Uh, then we move on to... Then we move on to the next match uh, that was on the pre-show, uh, which we saw the Raw Tag Team Championship match, where we saw the B Team uh, take on the Revival here. Very what you expect in this match. Revival, good tag team work, good tag team charisma. B team as well, up uh, getting that work in. But nonetheless, we saw another roll up. Bo Dallas getting a roll up over Dash Wilder for the win in the B team. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The B team keep the winning streak alive, and the B team keeps on rolling here. Uh, we see, we'll see who takes the tag team titles off the B team. Stay tuned on Monday Night Raw to see where this rivalry goes, or do we insert a new tag team? Will AOP be the next tag team who try to take on the B team to get uh, the Raw Tag Team Championship or with the Revival uh, get a return match uh, with here. But nonetheless, the B team has been rolling for the last couple of months and we saw them as a Raw Tag Team Champions. Not mad at them being Raw Tag Team Champions. Uh, it is good for them. It's about time that Bo Dallas and you, you know, McGillicuddy, uh, you want to call it, back to NAC days, uh, gets his get his shine. So it's good to see that that these two guys have really uh, moved on and uh, got some help, nonetheless, winning these matches. Then we move on to the main card here, as we saw Dolph Ziggler and Seth freaking Rollins start the show off, which was I thought was a great move by putting these two guys on first because both of them try to be show stealers. Both of them are, are hard workers. Both of them we set the pace for what's to follow. Be, this is one of those matches like, look, if you want to be the top dog, follow this match. And I don't think this match is disappointing at all. We got a good match here by Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins. But at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, when it was all said and done, when the smoke cleared, it was Seth freaking Rockin' Rollins becoming your new IC champion as he hit a curb stomp on Dolph Ziggler for the win. Seth Rollins gets here. No no turn by Dean Ambrose, as most people thought. But if you listen to our prediction show on last Thursday, our main man from Doc Sports, Rafael Espaza, told you that it would not be a, a heel turn by Dean Ambrose. You got to realize it wouldn't be Dean. Come on, they selling shirts. What heel in a heel turn sells shirts? He's making merchandise off his new shirts. So nonetheless, for Seth Rollins, is your new IC champion. See where the feud goes here. Then we go on to the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match where we saw the New Day take on the Bludgeon Brothers. We saw the, the, the combination of New Day was Xavier Woods 
and Big E taking on the Blunder Brothers. And the winners of the match actually were the New Day, but the Blunder Brothers retained the tag team titles because we the Blunder Brothers took the mallet to New Day and was disqualified. But after the match, we saw Big E and Xavier Woods get some retribution on the Blunder Brothers. The Blunder Brothers will continue to be your SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Be interested to see who takes the title off of them. Will it be Sanity that takes the title? Will New Day get another opportunity to take the title? Will the Usos rise up and bring the Blunder Brothers to the Uso penitentiary? Well, nonetheless, we'll see that on Tuesday night SmackDown, how that story to Tag Team title storyline furthers on. But nonetheless, the SmackDown, still your SmackDown Tag Team Champions is the Blunder Brothers. Then we move on to the Money in the Bank match. And we knew the stipulations on this match that if Braun Strowman loses any type of way, whether it was count out, whether it was disqualification, whatever case may be, whether it was pinfall, submission, that Kevin Owens would become the Mr. Money in the Bank. This match right here, kind of as I'm sitting here watching it, I don't know what you, I want you to leave a comment in the bottom of the screen. Did you enjoy this match? Did this match live up to what you thought it would be? Or you just... Because it was a squash match, if you have not watched it yet, I'm spoiling it for you. It was a squash match. Braun Strowman comes out and completely dominates Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens had been in a cage with this man on the last pay per view, uh, and then they wrestled for a while. But now Braun Strowman comes out and squashes Kevin Owens. Your winner of the match and still Money in the Bank champion is Braun Strowman. And when you saw this match being so quick, you had to think in your mind, you know what? Braun Strowman has to be able to uh, must have another match in later on <laughs> in this in this card. So you saw this match so quickly you either kevin owens is hurt or wwe really want to make kevin owens look bad nonetheless braun Strowman gets a quick quick win over kevin owens once again leave a comment about what you thought about this match here uh in the comment below was it too quick was it a squash match did wwe make kevin owens look bad but nonetheless then we move on to the smackdown women's triple threat match charlotte flair Becky Lynch taking on Carmella for the SmackDown Women's Championship match. Good match here. Good interaction by Carmella. I thought what Carmella was doing to pit Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair against each other was smart. I thought Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair interaction, how they were friends and the respect and whether this relationship was going to blow up was a good story told in this match. But at the end of the day, when the smoke cleared, it was the queen from the Queen City herself, Charlotte Flair, becoming the SmackDown Women's Champion once again. But that was not it, ladies and gentlemen. That wasn't all of it because we got a this is we got a heel turn by Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch attacks Charlotte Flair at the end of the match, and Becky Lynch snaps. She snaps, starts beating Charlotte Flair up. Their friendship is probably over since we didn't get the Bailey and Sasha Banks split. We did the Becky Lynch and Charlotte split here, and I don't see them two being tag team no time soon like they doing a Raw with some, uh, Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks, but nonetheless, Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair will move on. Uh, and I, I'm going to say they're going to face each other right now at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. We might get a Hell in a Cell match out of here. I would like to see it. Don't know if you like to see it, but i like to see a Hell in a Cell match between Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. Look like where WWE SmackDown is going. we got to find out to Tuesday night and see what General Manager Page says about this one. We see here so Charlotte Flair once again wins the SmackDown uh, Women's Championship. And we get the Becky and <laughs> Becky Lynch gets the snap. Becky Lynch, yes. And, and and you got the fans yelling. You know, you deserve it. You got the fans cheering for Becky Lynch. Fans are excited to see Becky Lynch snap. You know. And that's that's what is that's what it's all about. Uh Becky Lynch getting some personality. But let's move on. Here, AJ Styles taking on Samoa Joe. This is the match where huh, I'm disappointed where this match was placed at. I, I need to hear from you. Once again, leave a comment in below. Did you like the placement of this match? This match right here was placed in the middle card. Six more matches after this match, and we got the WWE Championship in the middle of of the card. Samoa Joe taking on AJ Styles. It's not the co-main event. It's not even the co-co-main event. It is the middle and SmackDown in the middle of the card. Nonetheless, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles lived up to the billing. It, it wasn't a hard-hitting match. You know, AJ Styles was able to hit 
the Styles clash on Samoa Joe, wasn't able to get the pin. Samoa Joe was able to put the Kakina clutch on AJ Styles. AJ Styles was able to escape by putting his foot on the rope. Uh, the match goes to the outside. Joe gets to Mike. He talks to AJ Styles' wife and told him that I told you uh, that daddy uh, was going to come home, but I lied. He's not coming home, which pissed AJ, uh, AJ Styles off. AJ Styles crashes Samoa Joe through the announce table and then, get, and then proceeds to get a cheer and to beat the living piss out of Samoa Joe, getting disqualified. But Samoa winner of the match is Samoa Joe. He did not leave with the WWE Championship, but he did go with the W. So we'll see Samoa Joe and AJ Styles once again. This feud will carry over into the Hell in a Cell. I expect this to be one of a one of the Hell in a Cell matches from the next upcoming pay per view. Samoa Joe and AJ Styles. Hey, once again, leave leave a comment on what you thought about um, the placement of this match did you enjoy it did you not enjoy it i might put a poll up uh, at the top of the screen and see uh just want to be interested to see if you guys vote and how you like it or not but aj styles samoa joe ended in the dq samoa joe gets the win uh then we moved on to the match what i thought would be the really the show stealer that everybody wanted to see the match that was eight years uh in the making the miz taking on daniel bryan uh Miz taking on daniel bryan here as, you, as they both come out, Miz has another outfit on. Again, guys, I was watching it with always talked about Miz's outfits, but nonetheless, Daniel Bryan coming out in the Seattle Seahawks colors. Daniel Bryan in the Miz hooked it up, and it was what you expected. It was a hard hitting match. Uh, my man Champ Creed, shout out to him, said the match went a little too long. He wasn't the only one. Some people that I watched it with thought the match went too long. Want to know again once your comments on this one? Did the Daniel Bryan in the Miz match go too long? Was it 10 minutes too long? Was it 15 minutes too long? Uh, let, let us know. Leave a comment below. Uh, did it go too long but i like how this match ended daniel bryan did not get the win ladies and gentlemen the miz got the win with the assist of maurice maurice handed an old school handed the miz something in his hands miz was able to knock out daniel bryan and get the win here we see later on that brie approaches daniel bryan and daniel bryan was sulking in the back uh i see somewhere down the line after Maurice recovering, recovers from the baby and gets back in shape, might we may, and I'm saying may, see how WWE play, we may get a tag team match. Daniel Bryan and Bree taking on Miz and Maurice. We'll see how that goes. Um, I'll be one to vote for it. I think it will be a good match to see those two, but I think we get the Miz and Daniel Bryan again at Hell in a Cell, which you could definitely get. And we might have a lot of Hell in Cell matches uh, in the next in the Hell in Cell pay-per-view. It might almost turn into TNA lockdown uh, with all these feuds that will have to end uh, in the cell. So we may get this one. Um, I think we will get Daniel Bryan and Miz in the Hell in Cell match. But let me know what you think as well. Uh, let's move on. Uh, we'll move on to Finn Balor and Baron Corbin. Once again, I said the placement of AJ Styles match. Why is this match here towards the end of the card? I Look, whatever. We <laughs> have Finn Balor versus the constable uh, Baron Corbin. Only way they could make this match interesting was that it wasn't Finn Balor who took on Baron Corbin. Nonetheless, it was the demon who came out and took on Baron Corbin. Very quick match. Finn Balor gets the win over Baron Corbin. Well, excuse me. The demon gets the win over Baron Corbin. I hope this, I hope this feud is over. Finn Balor needs to move on. Whether it was the IC title pitcher, whether it's the universal title pitcher uh, with the universal champion, he needs to do something other than feud with Finn Balor. I mean, other than a feud with Baron Corbin. Let's see where, where Finn Balor goes from here, and let's see where the demon comes on. It, it took more time to put the makeup on than it did for this match, but nonetheless, the demon gets the win. Then we move on to the United States Championship match where we saw Shinsuke Nakamura taking on AJ Styles. AJ Styles looking to get, I mean, excuse me, taking on Matt Jeff Hardy. Not AJ Styles, taking on Jeff Hardy. I probably thought this is where the AJ Styles match should be placed at uh, and on the card instead of where it was placed at. Uh, AJ Styles still on the mind. But Nakamura taking on Jeff Hardy here as for the United States Championship match. A very good match here. We saw a Jeff Hardy, you know, putting work in on AJ Styles. We saw Jeff Hardy uh, doing what he needed to do and, and, and which live up to the crowd. He put... Mocking Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura, I think this is one of the best matches Nakamura had uh, since coming to uh, the WWE. I think I'm glad that the WWE let this match go on, that we didn't get any interference from uh, Randy Orton. Not at the beginning of this match, anyway. Let this match all the way play out. Jeff Hardy needed to 
uh, having full match with Nakamura. We didn't get it a couple months ago uh, because the dog biting Nakamura. Didn't get it at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. Uh, got a real quick match because Nakamura hit Jeff Hardy uh, in the nuts. But we did get a, he did get the match here. Uh, but nonetheless, your champion is still the United States champion. It's Sinsuke Nakamura. Sinsuke Nakamura hit Jeff Hardy with the Kinsasa after Jeff Hardy hit a swanton bomb and landed hard on his back on the apron. But none of, and Sensuke Nakamura got the Kinshasa on Jeff Hardy for the one, two, three. Now, this is what was happening peculiar after this match. We hear Jeff Hardy's down, writhing in pain, is upset. You know, he just lost against Nakamura. There hits Randy Orton's music. You think, oh my gosh, Randy Orton about to beat the piss out of, of Jeff Hardy. A little bit more. Since he's already down and out, the Viper's getting ready to strike. He walks up the ramp. He comes down to the ring a little bit. He looks at Jeff Hardy. And then Randy Orton walks away. And we don't get an attack. The Viper, I guess he didn't want to strike. Then we'll see where this goes on Tuesday night SmackDown. It was a little surprising. I think they could have did without the Randy Orton appearance. But... That's WWE, uh, but it made it intriguing. It made a storyline for Tuesday Night SmackDown to see why Randy Orton did not strike on a hurt and broke down Jeff Hardy. Then we moved on to the Raw Women's Championship match where we saw Ronda Rousey take on Alexa Bliss. This match right was built up. This is the ESPN. This is the Fox Sports. This is the match everybody wanted to see. Will Ronda Rousey and Alexa Bliss put on a good match. WWE here, Ronda Rousey comes on out. First of all, we get Natalia who comes out when Jim the Anvil Nightheart's jacket. Uh, she comes out to a big pop. Good to see Natalia back at work. You know, might be a place she needed to be to for the grieving period uh, for her family. They talk about her and Ronda relationship. We're around the relationship, but we can get this match to start. Then we get this match to start. Uh, Alexa Bliss didn't want to mix, mix it up with Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey sets in the middle of the ring, puts turns her back to Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss climbs on. And the, here, this is where I'm thinking, man, you make an Alexa Bliss, this multi-time champion, first Raw and SmackDown Women champion, look weak against Ronda Rousey. There was no wrestling here, no type of offense from Alexa Bliss. Now, this is the same woman that's been announced early in the week that she was going to take on Trish Stratus, one of the best women wrestlers of all time at Evolution, and she doesn't get any kind of moves in on uh, Ronda Rousey. We had, even if you go back, Nia Jax at least has to put some work in on Ronda Rousey. She had a longer match. Stephanie McMahon put some work in on Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania. Alexa Bliss, multi-time champion, doesn't get any kind of type of offense against Ronda Rousey. Doesn't make sense to me. Uh, like to see what WWE. I'm not mad that Ronda Rousey is the W Women Raw Women's Champion. Not mad at that. I'm mad at the fact that we didn't really get to see a true wrestling match. That we didn't get to see Alexa Bliss and Ronda Rousey really mix it up in the ring and wrestle. Ronda's looking like she's only limited to her in our offense here. Uh, she has some good moves at WrestleMania. Uh, had some better moves uh, with Nia Jax. When you had opportunity to be in the ring with a wrestler like Alexa Bliss and she and Ronda doesn't get to wrestle, that's what I'm mad at. But nonetheless, we have a new champ with Raw Women's Champion. Ronda Rousey makes Alexa Bliss tap out to the arm bar. This way has also got confusing. I don't there's rumors out there that you see Ronda Rousey and Nikki Bella at Evolution. Don't know about the rumors. If you believe that rumor, but I don't want to see Ronda Rousey taking on the Bella Twins. Matter of fact, why are the Bella Twins even in this ring at this time? Let Ronda have her moment. You know, she went over to a Travis Brown. I understand Natalia being in the ring. Let Natalia be in the ring celebrate with Ronda Rousey. Bella Twins, stop stealing the, stop stealing the limelight, and let's move on. Ronda Rousey gets the win and is your new Raw Women's Champion. Then we move on to the main event of the night. Brock Lesnar taking on Roman Reigns. Universal Championship match. This match had a lot of questions going on it, going into it. Will Paul Heyman still be with Brock Lesnar at the end of the night? Will Roman Reigns align with Paul Heyman? Will Braun Strowman, since we know that Braun Strowman, at this point, you already know that Braun Strowman won the money in the bank briefcase. Will he cash in? And we got right, right as this match started, we saw Braun Strowman come out, and he said, I'm not going to be like everybody else. We all know what this briefcase is for. I'm not going to uh, beat one of you up while you're down. What I'm going to tell you is I'm going to stand outside at this ring, and the winner of this match, I am cashing in and will face me. That's right. They will face me, and at a huge pop. 
the crowd pops for this because they figure, okay, we're going to get another match, a bonus match after this match. Uh, didn't go quite as planned. Braun Strowman uh, did not get opportunity to cash in because Brock Lesnar attacked him outside the ring in the middle of this match against Roman Reigns. Takes the briefcase and launches it back up the ramp. I think he broke something on the entrance ramp, uh, uh, the lighting on the entrance ramp. Nonetheless, uh, he hits Braun Strowman with an F5 outside the ring. Gets back into the ring uh, with a cheer and as, if he's, as he goes to hit Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns hits another spear onto Brock Lesnar, and we have a new WWE champion. We have a new Universal champion, Roman Reigns. This is where I want. This is what is interesting to me. Fans boo Roman Reigns when he comes out, but when he gets the Universal title, it is nothing but cheers in the Barclays Center. Whether the cheers is because Roman Reigns finally got the Universal title, or the cheers are because of the fact that Braun Strowman, I'm just giving that um, Brock Lesnar is no longer the Universal champion. Once again, I'm gonna leave a poll up in the leave a poll up here and I want to know what you think is it because were you cheering because Brock Lesnar was no longer the champion or you were you cheering because Roman Reigns is the universal champion leave a comment in the box below also vote on the poll that's going to be up on the top of your screen as well Roman Reigns, Universal Champion, moved on to Monday Night Raw. We'll see where he fused here. Will Braun Strowman? Braun Strowman said, hey, he did what Braun Strowman goes to Twitter later on and says that, look, you're still going to catch these hands. Somebody's still going to catch these hands. Will we get a cash in tonight? Uh, Braun Strowman against Roman Reigns. Uh, will we get that cash in? We know that Brock Lesnar may be gone um, you know, from the WD, WWE for a while. Uh, because of his loss to Roman Reigns and because of his obligations to UFC. His contract's not over yet. Uh, so Brock, we could see Brock on Monday Night Raw. So you never know. Thought this pay-per-view was a good pay-per-view. I put a poll. We put a poll up on Fox Sports 1340 AM's Twitter page. Uh, and we wanted to see the results. 40, uh, 41% of the people thought this was a four-star uh, pay-per-view. Had 9% who thought it was two-star. 27% that thought it was three-star. And 23% of you uh, thought it was a five-star pay-per-view. I think that poll is still up, as you, depending on what time you watch this video, at 1340 AM Fox Sports. You can go ahead and check that poll out. Go ahead and vote. Uh, we'll probably review the results on our Monday night show as we review Monday Night Raw. Stay tuned for that as we're going to do each and every week. We'll give you the final results of this SummerSlam poll. But as a time of recording this, 41% 41 of you thought this was a four-star pay-per-view. Didn't think it was a bad pay-per-view. Thought it was all right. Thought it, it served its purpose. Uh, it was a good blockbuster summer pay-per-view. And the, we'll see where the WWE is moving on for Hell in a Cell. Thought the winners uh, was no big surprises there. Too much, too many surprises. We knew about the Roman Reigns situation. Knew that Braun Strowman would be able to try to cash in. Very good pay per view here. Hey, leave your thoughts in your comments below if you enjoyed the SummerSlam pay per view. Also, go over to Fox Sports, uh, thirteen forty a.m. I. Uh, Hey, while you're over on Twitter, go ahead and hit the uh, follow us on Twitter as well at 1340 AM Fox Sports. Or you can follow us on Twitter at WMOE Podcast. Check us out there at WMOE Podcast on Twitter and as Instagram, a Wrestling Marks are Excellent Podcast. Also, subscribe once again before I get out of here. Subscribe to this show by hitting the subscribe button, hitting the little bell. If you enjoyed it, leave the thumbs up. If you like it, leave a th thumbs down. If you don't like it, you leave a comment below on some of the things I ask you to comment on. Once again, we have a Raw review show of this Monday night after Monday Night Raw. Ladies and gentlemen, Glenn Thomas. Hey, for the rep, one fourth of the rest of Marks for Excellence. Hope you enjoyed this. Leave a comment and subscribe below. Good night.